Hello everyone! Welcome or welcome back here on my channel. This is me once again, Teacher Jinjin, your virtual teacher here on YouTube. Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na ito, gumagawa ako ng mga Tagalog tutorial videos mula grade 7 hanggang grade 11. Kung interesado ka, please like, subscribe, at i-click mo na rin ang notification bell para ma-notify ka kapag may bago akong upload na video. Magandang araw mga minamahal kong grade 9 students. Sa video lesson na ito ay itutuloy natin ang inyong learning task number 2, part 2. Kung hindi nyo pa napanood yung part 1, ipanoorin nyo muna yon upang sa ganun ay mas lalo ninyong maintindihan yung number 2 hanggang number 4. Okay? Again, disclaimer lang, pinapalitan ko yung mga given ha. So, meron tayong quadratic function dito na x squared plus 4x plus 7. Ang value ng A dito is 1, ang value ng B is 4, at ang value ng C is 7. So, kagaya lang din ang ginawa natin sa number 1, kunin muna natin yung H. Negative B over 2A by substitution that is negative, ang B natin is 4, over 2 times ang A natin is 1. Simplify, negative 4 over 2 times 1 is equal to 2, negative 4 divided by 2 is equal to negative 2. Kung medyo mabilis mga anak, paki-adjust nyo na lang sa settings meron namang ano dyan, playback speed. Then, kunin naman natin ngayon yung k. 4ac minus b squared over 4a. By substitution, that is 4 times ang a natin is 1 times ang c natin is 7 minus b natin is 4 squared all over 4 times 1. Simplify. 4 times 1 times 7 is equal to 28. Minus 4 squared is equal to 16 over 4 times 1 is equal to 4. And then 28 minus 16 is equal to 12 over 4. That is equal to 3. So, ang vertex natin ay negative 2, positive 3. Okay. So, itong formula na to ay ginagamit lang ha kapag ganito yung given. May iba't ibang form din kasi ng quadratic function. Meron ding 0k tsaka 0, 0. Ngayon, ilalagay na natin yung ating vertex dito sa table. Negative 2, positive 3. At ang value ng h ay equal to x. Ibig sabihin, ang axis of symmetry natin is negative 2 rin. Tapos, ang range natin is y such that y is greater than or equal to k kasi ang value ng a natin is greater than 0. Kung less than 0 yung a natin, less than or equal to k naman yan. So, that is y such that y is greater than or equal to ang k natin is 3. Kaya ganyan. Tapos, ang domain natin, syempre, is set of all real numbers. Ngayon, ano naman ang opening of the parabola? So, yung a natin is positive, meaning to say, upward din yung ating parabola. Para naman mahanap yung x-intercept at yung y-intercept, maglelet y is equal to 0 tayo. Para makuha yung x-intercept. So, that is, 0 is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 7. Since hindi ito factorable, then we can use the quadratic formula. By substitution, that is x equals negative, ang b natin is 4 plus minus square root of b is 4 squared minus 4 times ang a natin is 1 times ang c natin is 7 all over 2 times ang a natin is 1. Okay? Then simplify, that is negative 4 plus minus 4 squared is equal to 16 minus 4 times 1 times 7 is equal to 28. All over, 2 times 1 is equal to 2. And then, 16 minus 8 is equal to negative 12. Paghiwalay natin, negative 4 divided by 2 is equal to negative 2. And then, meron tayong square root of negative number dito. So, paano nga ba ulit kinukuha yung square root ng negative number? Diba ito, magiging square root of 12 times square root of negative 1. Yung negative 1, ang ibig sabihin niyan, imaginary. Kasi hindi natin pwedeng kunin yung square root ng negative number. Kaya, ihiwalay natin. Ano ang square root ng 12? That is 2 square root of 3 
divided by 2 is equal to square root of 3. Tapos, ang square root naman ng negative 1 is i. Ibig sabihin niyan, wala tayong x-intercept. Kasi hindi naman natin pwedeng i-graph yung imaginary number sa Cartesian plane. Kasi nga, imaginary siya. Okay? So, ang x-intercept natin ay wala or none. Baka tanungin ninyo, possible ba na walang x-intercept? Possible yun. Kasi sabi ko nga sa nakaraang video, pwedeng yung parabola ay nasa taas ng x-axis, hindi niya tatamaan yung x-axis. Or pwede rin namang nasa baba siya, hindi niya tatamaan yung x-axis. So, ganun lang siya. Okay? So, ano naman ang y-intercept? Maglelet x equals 0 tayo. So, that is y is equal to 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 7. Siyempre, magiging 0 yan. Magiging 0. Ang matitira is 7. So, ang y-intercept natin, kapag ang x ay 0, then ang y natin is 7. Nakuha ninyo? So, kompleto na yung table natin. Now, we can graph the quadratic function. Ang una nating iplaplat ay yung vertex. Nasaan dito yung negative 2, positive 3. Negative 2, positive 3, nandito siya. Okay? And then, wala tayong x-intercept, so wala tayong mailalagay dito. And then, ang y-intercept natin is 0, positive 7. Paano na natin yung gagawing parabola? Pwede kayong mag-pick dito. Pwede kayong mag-let x is equal to negative 4. Pag negative 4 yung x, ano yung magiging value ng y? So, i-substitute nyo lang yung negative 4 sa quadratic function. So, itry natin. y is equal to negative 4 squared plus 4 times 4 plus 7. Ah, negative pala to. So, negative 4 squared is equal to 16. And then, 4 times negative 4 is equal to negative 16 plus 7. Okay. So, that is equal to 16 minus 16 equals 0 plus 7 equals 7. Kung ang value ng x natin is negative 4, then ang value ng y is equal to 7. So, pwede ninyong idagdag dito. Negative 4, positive 7. So, nandyan siya. And then, pwede nyo nang i-connect yung mga points. So, magiging ganyan na yung parabola. Okay? Now, let's proceed to number 3. We have a quadratic function, negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 10, wherein yung a natin is negative 3, yung b natin is positive 12, at yung c naman natin is negative 10. So, ang una natin gagawin ay kunin natin yung vertex using this formula. So, ang h natin is negative b over 2a by substitution that is equal to negative, ang b natin is 12 over 2 times ang a naman natin is negative 3. Simplify, that is equal to negative 12 over 2 times negative 3 is equal to negative 6. And negative 12 divided by negative 6 equals positive 2. Kasi pareho silang negative. Pag nag-divide tayo, pag pareho yung sign nila, divide then magiging positive. Okay? Ngayon, meron na tayong h. Kunin naman natin yung value ng k. And that is 4a minus b squared all over 4a naman. By substitution, that is equal to 4 times ang a natin is negative 3 times ang c natin is negative 10 minus ang b natin is 12 squared all over 4 times ang a natin is negative 3. Nasundan? Let's simplify. 4 times negative 3 is equal to negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 10 is equal to positive 120. Minus 12 is squared, that is 12 times 12 equals 144. 4 times negative 3 is equal to negative 12. Then simplify natin. 120 minus 144 using the rule of integer pag magka iba ng sign. Subtract. So, 144 minus 120 is equal to 24. Then, copy the sign of the greater number. Ano yung sign ng mas malaking number? Negative. Kaya, negative 24 divided by negative 12. Negative 24 divided by negative 12 
is equal to positive 2. Okay? So, ang value ng vertex natin, hk, that is positive 2, positive 2. So, meron na tayong vertex. Ilalagay natin dyan. Then, ang next na gagawin natin, pwede na rin nating makuha yung value ng axis of symmetry. Kasi nga, yung h is equal to the axis of symmetry. Ano yung h natin? That is positive 2. Kaya, ang axis of symmetry naman natin is positive 2 rin. Tapos, pwede na rin natin makuha yung range. Okay, so dito sa number 3 ay iba dun sa number 1 at number 2. Bakit? Kasi yung value ng A dito is negative. Diba sabi ko nga, kapag yung value ng A is less than 0, ang formula ng range is less than or equal to K. Diba pag greater than 0, greater than or equal to, ito naman less than or equal to. Ibig sabihin nito, downward yung magiging graph niya. So, makikita natin mamaya. Ano yung value ng k natin? That is 2. Kaya, ang range natin is y such that y is less than or equal to positive 2. Ibig sabihin, itong 2, ito yung maximum point niya. And then, syempre, ang domain natin ay set of all real numbers. Yan yung paragi natin ilalagay dyan. Tapos, ano naman ang opening of the parabola? Kahit wala tayong graph. Meron tayong basihan yung kanyang value ng a. So, kapag yung value ng a is negative, yung parabola opens downward. Ibig sabihin, ang ilalagay natin dito is downward. Ganun lang siya. And now, we can now get the x and y intercepts. Para makuha yung x intercept, let y is equal to 0. So, papalitan natin yung y ng 0 and as you can see, naging quadratic equation na siya. Using the quadratic formula again, Substitute the values, we have x is equal to negative, tapos ang b natin is 12, plus minus square root of, ang b natin is 12, squared, minus 4, times ang a naman natin is negative 3, times ang c natin is negative 10, all over 2, times ang a natin is negative 3. Simplify natin, negative times positive 12 equals negative 12, plus minus 12 times 12 equals 144 minus 4 times negative 3 equals negative 12 times negative 10 is equal to 120 all over 2 times negative 3 equals negative 6 isimplify natin yung nandito sa loob ng radical sign 144 minus 120 is equal to 24 then paghiwalayin natin Negative 12 divided by negative 6 plus minus square root of 24 over negative 6. So negative 12 divided by negative 6 is equal to positive 2. At para makuha naman yung value nito, gumamit kayo ng scientific calculator. Ang square root ng 24 is 4.89 divided by negative 6 is equal to negative 0. 81, or negative 0.82 by rounding to the nearest hundred. Okay? Ngayon, kunin natin yung plus muna. So, 2 plus negative 0.82 is equal to 1.18. Then, kunin naman natin yung minus, yung second root. 2 minus negative 0.82 is equal to positive 2.82. Ang x-intercept natin ay... 1.18, 0, kasi ang y natin is 0, and 2.82, 0. Yan yung dalawang x-intercept natin. Ngayon, para naman makuha yung y-intercept, let x is equal to 0. Palitan natin ng 0 yung x dito. So, magiging negative 3, 0 squared plus 12, times 0, minus 10. Then, syempre, magiging 0 yan, magiging 0, ang matitira na lang ay negative 10. Meaning, ang ating y-intercept is 0 ang x, tapos ang y is negative 10. Okay? So, kompleto na ang ating table. Pwede na natin siyang i-graph sa Cartesian plane. Alright. So, ang una natin ilalagay ay yung vertex. Yung vertex natin is positive 2, positive 2. Nasaan dito ang positive 2? Nandito. 
Then, dito naman sa y-axis, yung positive 2 ay nandito. So, nandyan yung point natin. So, we have 1.180. So, saan siya dito? Medyo malapit lang siya sa positive 1.0. So, dyan natin ilalagay. Galingan nyo na lang mag-plot ng points ha. Kasi mahirap mag-plot ng point dito sa PowerPoint. Then, we have positive 2.82. Positive 2.82, malapit na siya sa 3. Konti na lang, malapit na siya sa 3. So, dyan natin ilalagay. And then, yung y-intercept naman is 0, negative 10. So, y-intercept, 0, negative 10. So, nandito siya sa P na kababa. So, pwede na natin i-connect yung mga points para magkaroon tayo ng parabola. I-connect nyo yung points smoothly. So, drawingan nyo lang yan ng parang letter U na baliktad. And then, maglagay dapat tayo ng arrowhead. Tapos, pwede kayo maglagay dyan ng arrow. Ilagay ninyo yung quadratic function. Okay? So, natapos na nga natin ang number 2 at number 3. Abangan ninyo yung susunod na video sa number 4. Kung gusto niyong panoorin, i-click nyo na lang dito sa taas or sa end screen or hanapin nyo na lang sa playlist natin. Kasi, i-upload ko din agad pagkatapos ng video na to. Masyado na kasing mahaba mga anak. Okay? Kung nagustuhan mo tong video na to, please do like and mag-comment ka na rin sa baba. Pakishare mo na rin sa mga classmates mo para malaman din nila. Okay? Once again, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy at mag-aaral lang mabuti. God bless you all and goodbye!